I'm Captain Bosch von Rotzenberg of Dalmaska. Well, what do you think? Imagine being invited to compose music for a big film or game franchise. There was a composer that was beloved by many, but that is not you. You need to establish yourself and your music to the already loved franchise. All the expectations are very high. How can you possibly succeed? But a game that did it was Final Fantasy XII. Following the departure from Square Enix by Nobuo Uematsu, a new composer had to be found to make music for Final Fantasy series. I suppose people who are watching this video might already be familiar with Final Fantasy, but those who aren't, Final Fantasy is this long-running RPG fantasy series. First game was released in 80s, got great success. After 30 years, it's still running quite successfully. While there has been many games on the way, they are still coming strong. Nobuo Uematsu had already established himself for people who played Final Fantasy, so it would be very very big step for anyone to replace him in the main role of making the music. If you look at any discussion about music from Final Fantasy, Nobuo Uematsu's name always comes because he basically made the music of Final Fantasy in early series. All the battle music, all the world music, everything was touched by Nobuo Uematsu in the past. After looking at their options, they finally found a composer who might be up for the challenge. Hitoshi Sakimoto. Sakimoto had already worked on smaller Final Fantasy titles, a notable game such as Final Fantasy Tactics, a strategic RPG experience. But these were smaller unknown titles compared to mainline series of Final Fantasy. Was he going to live up for the challenge of making music for a fanbase that already expected with different approach? ま、Final Fantasy XII begins with a war, which is quite common with these kinds of RPGs. A crisis comes, then heroes arise, but this time the conflict is different. In Final Fantasy games, usually the story and the world is different, but this time they came back to a world called Ivalis, where they had already established kingdoms, places, monsters and so forth. In previous games, the story begins from an independent kingdom that is attacked by an evil empire. Setting is this very much a mix of technology, uh, crystals, magic, and sword and shields. If I remember right, uh, for the culture and uh, development of uh, the world, they used uh, different cultures, mixed them together, took, for example, the clothing style, uh, some uh, fantasy elements and such, and combined them together to make something unique. And even in the beginning scene, the world looks distinct. So. The heir of the kingdom dies. War is lost. An empire wins the war. Then you play this kid trying to secure your king and you fail. Then you play with this another kid who doesn't die but does not do anything in the game. Seriously, this is the main character and he does not do much. Before going forward, I want to tell a few things about this game. First off, this game had a director who was changed and you can see that in the game and its story. From the beginning you have 
this interesting plot of war and deceit and empire tries to have its rule and dominion over this small kingdom who tries to become independent again. And at the same time, there are inner struggles within the empire and within its rule, which is quite fascinating. Beginning plot is, on my mind, very strong. And you have incentive to go forward with the plot and with the characters, even with the bland main character. I'm not sure is the story something that only resembles and resonates with me, because I'm from Finland, and uh, we have had history of... Uh, Two great empires, two great nations, and you being in between of them trying to survive. This very much is what happened in the game with its kingdom and its two great empires. So there was this beginning vision, but as I said, the director was changed. We don't know necessarily why, but that happened. And you can see that from which direction the game takes after this interesting political beginning game became this uh, plot where you had to basically destroy a god who tried to destroy the world and such and such. Very, very simple Final Fantasy plots that have been already seen times and times again. Also, if you haven't already noticed, this game took a lot of inspiration for its characters and stories even from Star Wars. Yeah, I, I bet you not, from Star Wars. So yeah, there was this uh, Chosen One character from a desert place, there's this Darth Vader character, there's this uh, evil empire of course with stormtroopers, there's uh, Han Solo and his hairy friend, <laughs> there is the rebellion, there are bounty hunters who try to get the Han Solo character, there is even a cloud city, and final climax is about stopping the Death Star. Yeah, I bet you not, stopping the Death Star type of machine. Also, the main character should have been a different one, uh, looking at the original plot, but it was changed to the marketing reasons. They ha wanted to have a, a young protagonist instead of having this uh, bearded old man as the protagonist guy. Aside from that, I think the game is very good. Looking at uh, how you traverse the world, the world is pretty massive, there are many distinct locations, there are many enemies to fight, this battle system, which is like some kind of dimensional battle system, it's very unique having to, you can go into the world and fight at the same time uh, the enemies and also do other activities, which makes the experience very smooth. Also, a big thing I like about this game is the music, I think we could actually talk about the music. So as we mentioned, music for Final Fantasy XII was made by Hitoshi Sakimoto. One great challenge was to live up for the name of Nobu Ematsu, who is still even today remembered to be the Final Fantasy composer. Here is where Sakimoto himself describes what the process was. He had to consider these two things, making music better or even at the same level as Uematsu's and making it fit to the new landscapes. Which there were many, I have to tell you. Deserts, sewers, snowy mountains, jungles, mines, dead cities and more. I personally like the new approach to the music, because if you look at the past games and uh, the melodies, there were some places and locations where you had great themes, but they were ultimately divided by the repetitious battle music that hardly changed during the game. Often in past Final Fantasies, when you heard a battle theme, you had to think that you're going to listen it throughout the game every time. In the newer games like Final Fantasy XV, they have been able to solve this, you know, having different battle tunes come at different stages of the game. But in terms of music uh, connected to the gameplay, Final Fantasy XII achieved a lot. Some area themes were made into partially aggressive, partially heroic, partially exploratious 
themes that uh, you could do these activities even for quite long times while playing the game. And if one theme would become too repetitive, you could just change the area. In addition, game had battle tunes and boss themes for special occasions. Story events and cutscenes had their own share of music as well. But looking at the soundtrack strengths, they lie in the field music of levels. その、But that was not the biggest challenge. Gameplay-wise, Final Fantasy XII worked really differently from the past entries. The dimensional battle system, as it was called, worked quite differently compared to past games where if a battle situation occurred, the whole game split in half, literally the screen was shaken, and then you were transformed into this battlefield where the battle took place. This affects awful lot to the game's pacing or the music. Can you have very distinct battle themes which are very aggressive at the same time as traversing and exploring the world? What good soundtrack and music can often do is elevate the game that it was in. These exploration themes could tell a lot about the levels themselves. Listen a few of these and imagine what kind of environments they could represent. その その雰囲気をずっと曲の中に残しながら、ま、As you might have noticed, the game was sort of kind of an offline MMORPG. Not an open world, but there was a huge world. Many zones, many bosses and a main story. A lot of things to grind, but a lot of things to explore as well. I have discussed with some people that loved Final Fantasy games in the past. Some people even said that they could not get themselves to finish the game because it was so different. They took risks to try to change the formula. And that is why I love Final Fantasy as a game series. It always changes, it always does something new, unlike some game series like Pokemon, which makes, of course, some small iterations, but you have to acknowledge it does not change that much as Final Fantasy games, their battle systems and their worlds. And they do not always get it right, I tell you. 
the story in this game, at least in the later sections of the game, is very awful. Just this kind of storyline where you have to destroy these godlike beings, and you know, these kind of things has been seen in Final Fantasy quite many times. Still, what Hitoshi Sakimoto was able to achieve was enormous. He succeeded in taking the composition role in Final Fantasy game and delivering. Not in a similar style as Nobuo Uematsu, but still very much as its own thing. Part of its own world, part of its own story. One thing I have to mention, music you are currently listening is not from the original game. It's from a new released version of Final Fantasy XII, a Zodiac Age as it's called. Essentially a game with better graphics and with better music as well. Hitoshi Sakimoto made great themes for the original PS2 release, but uh, they had really bad instruments and that shows they feel very old. And uh, I was very happy to see that Hitoshi himself went and remade added orchestral things to the new release of Zodiac Age's soundtrack. Not like some other composer that was not making the music originally remade it. No, it was Hitoshi himself. And uh, these new ones are my favorites compared to the old ones, definitely. When listening these, you can kind of see that they were kind of versions that he was able to achieve much more in and make his vision even better with these new instruments. Listen to difference from old to new. The soundtrack review is coming to an end. You have things to discuss about Final Fantasy soundtrack. Come to our Discord channel. We have discussions there daily and I and myself there participating. We are doing freelancing stuff. We are making projects there. Come and join us. Without one editor in the group, Tactical, I wouldn't be able to make this video right now. More videos are going to be coming in the future about soundtracks. And I'm a composer, my channel has a lot of music to be listened, I recommend you to have a look. But now, wherever you are, whoever you are, I wish you a great day. See you later. Bash from Damasca. I'm Captain Bash from Damasca. I'm Captain Bash from Damasca. Who aren't you though? I'm Captain Bash.